I'm Alessandra Lake from Kodiak. I'm Anna Carmen from Nome. Stormy Simeon from Juno. I'm Clara Green from Cottesville. I'm Martin Brown from Juno. And we are the Cutting Edge. I'm Clara. I'm Martin. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the Cutting, Cutting Edge. Edge. Our first story is on Student of the Month, Alexis Rexford. I'm Let's Anna go. Carmen, and I am here with January Student of the Month, Alexis Rexford. She was selected as Student of the Month because she exemplifies the MEHS values of responsibility, identity, commitment, and empowerment. Tell us a little bit what you did last summer. Last summer, I went to a behavioral health camp in Nome and earned a college credit with UAF. Also, I had the opportunity to attend a Native Youth in Agriculture Summit at the University of Arkansas. What do you plan to do this upcoming summer? This summer, I plan on going to Rawhide in Fairbanks to prepare for college. Thank you for coming in and keep up the good work. The next story is my story on the Edgecombe versus Kotzebue High School game. January 15th, 2018 is the first game of the year. It was a great one for our varsity boys as they played against Cottesview High. As for the night, it was a blowout game as Jamal and Ben put up the most points, Jamal scoring 23 and Ben in the paint as the dynamic duo Ben and Jamal pushed the team to another W. As the starting five make break and Jamal gets ready for jump ball. Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and checking a new hit get up. First shot, come strut walking. A little bit of humble, a little bit of cautious. Somewhere between Just after the first quarter, the score is 20 to 8. Moonwalking in this year is a party. Ben makes a fake, gets both of them, and makes a drive and scores. Al brings the ball down, hands it off to Ben, gets wide open for the three, hits the free three. Chasing dreams since I was 14 with the four track busting Halfway across that city with the back, 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 back Labels out here, now they can't tell me nothing We give that to the people, spread it across the country Labels out here, now they can't tell me nothing We give it to the people, spread it across the country Here we go back, this is the moment Edgecombe takes the W, 77 to 30 Next up is our first Battle of the Bridge. On Tuesday, January the 23rd, our MEHS boys basketball teams had their first Battle of the Bridge at the Sitka High School Gym. Our JV team beat the Sika JV by 20 points. Our MEHS Varsity Braves had a phenomenal match against the Sitka Wolves. After hard work and plenty of support from the crowd, we won our first game against Sitka. MEHS had the opportunity to host Damon Bellholter. Stormy has a story. Damon grew up in the community of Heidelberg. Uh, it's a small village here in the southeast. He learned at an early age to practice and be proud of his culture. He graduated from Ketchikan High School and earned an athletic scholarship to play at Oral Roberts University. 
After four years at Oral Roberts University, Damon finished his career ranked in the top in the school's top ten in rebounds, blocks, and wins, respectively. He was all conference his sophomore and senior seasons. Damon was named mid major All American his senior year. I'm Stormy Simeon here with the Cutting Edge News, and today we're interviewing Damon Holter, the first Alaska native to play in the NBA. Hey. Welcome to MEHS. What are you doing here today? <laughs> I came to Mount Edgecombe. You know, I've been traveling for the last couple of years, uh, speaking, motiv doing motivational speaking all over reservations yeah, and Native American community times. communities all over Alaska and all over Canada. And I had the opportunity to connect with Dr. with. Mr. Goulet, and we decided that you know he wanted me to come here and share my message with the students. And Mount Edgecombe High School is really close to my heart, so I felt like okay, this is a great opportunity to come back and share my message and share my journey. And I had the opportunity to do so, and I'm extremely grateful. Can you tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you got to Mount Edgecombe? Well, I had the opportunity. You know, I've heard about Mount Edgecombe. I heard about Archie Young, and I knew that in order for me to pursue my dream of playing basketball. I knew I had to be at a bigger school and it just so happened that Archie was an amazing coach and we connected and you know I came here and and he gave me the foundation to be successful at basketball so you know the primary primary reason I came here was for basketball I knew I had to come here in order or in order to have the resources to pursue my dream. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about life after Mount Edgecombe? I left, after I left Mount Edgecombe, I went to K High for two years, Ketchikan High School for two years, and I went on to play basketball at Oral Roberts University. It's a private Christian school in Oklahoma. It's a Division I school, and I had the opportunity to play for a really successful Division I program. And then after that, I became a professional. I had the opportunity to play for the Boston Celtics. I played in Turkey, I played in Finland, Italy, and I've traveled all over you know, the country, seeing reservations and communities all over Canada. And I've had the opportunity to work with kids all over the world. And that's especially what I'm, I'm more so especially grateful for that basketball has done for me. So do you have a favorite professional basketball memory? Uh, like I told the kids earlier, you know, I had the opportunity to be in the same locker room as Kevin Garnett as a child as my he was my childhood hero. I had him plastered all over my walls and I saw him on my wall my whole entire as a kid, my whole entire life. I watched YouTube on Kevin Garnett and that's what I wanted to be like. And having the opportunity to sit there and interact with Kevin Garnett, one of my childhood heroes, it was kind of my me realizing, you know, my dream came true. You know, like it, there was no other feeling to describe what that feeling was like to sit there and look at somebody who had literally worshipped as a kid and now he's dapping me up as one of his peers rather than being a fan or whatever the case may be and that's something I had to get over. That's one of my the coolest memories too is that being able to see those people and not even look at them as guys I see on TV but more so as peers and people I compete against and that's my dream coming true you know and that's the message that I, w I want Edgecombe kids to understand is that there's a lot of resources here there's a, this is an amazing school that can elevate you to give you the opportunity to reach your dreams or reach your goals or whatever the case may be. So I don't want anybody to take that for granted and understand that you know, you're know you put here for a reason and that's how the universe works. The universe is going to push you right where you need to be, right when you need to be there. So regardless of what's going on in your life or whatever the case may be, you know, adversity hits all of us and it's not how you respond to adversity. Okay? You know, if you respond to adversity, that's what really truly makes a person. Because okay? it happens to everybody, but how are you going to react to it? And that's why I want a lot of our student body to understand you know, and take that away from this, that, that dreams come true regardless of what you come from, where you come from, or what you look like. You just have to sacrifice and put the ultimate work in. So thank you for coming to Manachkam and spending this time with us. Absolutely. Hey. The city of Sitka had a scare. We covered the tsunami warning. Let's go take a look. Early Tuesday morning on January 23rd at around 12.30 a.m., a 7.9 magnitude earthquake hit 174 miles southeast of Kodiak, Alaska. The powerful undersea earthquake sent many Alaskans racing to evacuation areas in the middle of the night after a cell phone alert warned a tsunami could hit communities along the state's southern coast and parts of British Columbia. The waves never materialized but people fled and endured hours of tense waiting at shelters before they were cleared to return home. Thankfully, there was no reports of damage, not even on Kodiak Island, the closest land to the epicenter. Oh, I'm Chad Brown and I'm from Kongiganek and I'm a senior. I'm Andrea Cook and I'm from Heidelberg. 
And my story is about like my hometown and how me and my family go hunting, fishing, and berry picking every year for subsistency. I wanted to share that addiction can be healed through your culture, your traditions, your songs. I would really recommend this to anyone that is interested in sharing who they are, showing how beautiful our culture is and how much value there is in us, knowing your identity. If you are interested in being a part of our lesson stories this year, come to the first informational meeting after school in Mr. Fitz's room on Monday, February 5. Join our Google Classroom. And remember, hey, stay tuned to Cutting Edge News, okay? <laughs> Live and direct. Thank you.